Good morning. It is Phil to the Brim and it is Saturday, December 10th and we're in Advent season. We're talking about the Prince of Peace. I'm going to read our theme scripture for this week. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteous from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Prince of Peace came. And the Prince of Peace came to bring you and me peace by dwelling within us because the Prince of Peace dwells in us because he's a person. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Many times people are looking for peace externally when it actually is the person of Christ. Ephesians 2.14, For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He has destroyed the hostility. You know, when Jesus came as a babe, King Herod wanted to kill Jesus, wanted to slaughter Jesus. See, the enemy always wants to kill peace. The enemy wants to kill peace through destruction, through division. He seeks out to destroy peace. It's interesting because Jesus says in Matthew 12, 25, a house divided against itself cannot stand. The fact is this, too many people, too many churches, too many homes are trying to stand without unity. Shalom, peace, the peace of God, has to do with unity. The enemy always seeks to destroy unity. Because if he can destroy unity, he tears away peace. Destruction of peace. You know, we are called to be peacemakers. And therefore, I really believe that as his children, because scripture says, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So our identity as children of God has to do with being peacemakers. I'm asking you this question. Are you a peacemaker? Do you bring peace to situations? Or do you stir division? Because you're unhappy about something. Because there's a difference of opinion. And therefore, as a result of the difference of opinion, you stir division rather than seeking to understand and having conflict resolution. You need to ask yourself, because according to Jesus, the children of God are peacemakers. Believers, if you're not careful and you're walking in the flesh, you can be used by the enemy to bring destruction because you are being divisive. See, that's being used by the enemy. That's like being Herod. Herod was a Jew. Herod was a Jew. The Jews were supposed to be wanting the Messiah to come. Herod didn't want that. He walked in his flesh. If you know anything about King Herod, he was a very fleshly man. It's interesting how fleshliness becomes an enemy to the peace of God. The enemy has always hated shalom, has always hated the shalom, the presence of God. And, and in the Garden of Eden, where God placed Adam and Eve, it was a place of shalom, the presence of God. And the enemy hated the presence of God he didn't like the fact that God had created humans who were made in his image. And so what did the enemy do? He went in and he stirred up division through creating disunity. Division, die vision, meaning two visions. So what he did is he came in and whispered to Eve, Listen, God's intention is not best for you. There is a different vision you should have. He stirred suspicion about the goodness of God. And they began to believe what the enemy's word says. Now I want you to think about 
Adam and Eve, before this happens, that they are walking and dwelling in the shalom of God. How is it that people can be in the presence of God, in the atmosphere of God, and take the enemy's bait? Take the enemy's words and make them thoughts within them and then act upon them. But you know, it's interesting, as a pastor for many, many years, I have found that believers, Christians, can do that as well. And what it produces is, as a result of taking the bait of the enemy, a spirit of division which creates destruction. Whether it be thoughts that are divisive in a church community, that they fu people function out in being critical and divisive, and unsubmissive towards leadership and tearing down, being complaining, whatever it may be, to create some spirit of chaos and destruction. Remember that there's no there's no goodness in that, because Jesus said, "A house divided against itself cannot stand." This is what happened in the Garden of Eden. This is the enemy's old way of doing it, and it works. Is if I can get you to think a certain way, to step outside of the shalom of God, to not be in submission to the shalom of God. The Father God hates division. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says this, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to Him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Hmm. Hates. Why? Because the Father saw what it did to Adam and Eve. The destruction that it created that we still have results from today. The hostility, the hatred coming in because of the division. The Lord loves diversity. He created diversity. We see that in the creation story. He loves it. Even Paul writes about the body of Christ. We being many, we being different, are one body. The beauty of that. And yet, the Lord hates division. We are to be people who are people of shalom and peace and unity. The word shalom, the very central aspect to the word shalom is wholeness and unity. See, the Lord hates division, but he loves diversity. We learn through diversity. We learn through the differences of one another how to function together. The love bandwidth extends in the diversity of learning about one another, of honoring one another. But division creates death. Division creates death in marriages, in families, in your own human body. Division, the systems working against one another, creates death. It destroys nations and communities and churches and the witness of the church. That's what division does. And the enemy hates the Prince of Peace. He wanted to destroy Jesus when he came. The enemy still hates the Prince of Peace that dwells in the believer. And he wants you and I to not be in submission to the Prince of Peace so that we are agents of division and hostility rather than agents of his peace, the Prince of Peace. I want us in this season, and actually more than this season, to be people of His peace. People who carry the Prince of Peace. Beware, beware of self-righteousness. So many times when we do have conflict, our stance can be self-righteous rather than honor for other people. Take inventory. Do you have pain that is not healed in your life? that is triggered through situations and then you function in bitterness or an offended spirit or unforgiving spirit, 
I want you to take inventory of that and allow the Prince of Peace to come to that situation. You say, well, I was wronged. We've all been wronged and we wronged Jesus. And you know what Jesus addresses that is we've been forgiven much and now we should go about forgiving others. He's given parables on that. Listen, if you can't forgive other people, God can't forgive you. That's what he says in his parable. I want us to take inventory of that because unity produces life and blessing. Peace produces fruitfulness around us. And we defeat division, which is the enemy of peace. We defeat it by excelling in the love of God. By having the Prince of Peace be master over every area of our life. And how do we do that? We've got to submit ourselves. We've got to be in prayer. Listen, I know none of us are perfect. So we take it to the Lord. And we say, Lord, I submit myself to you, Lord. Again, you are the Prince of Peace. Help me, Lord, be an agent of your reconciliation. Not my will, not my fleshly will, not my human will, but your will be done. This is a challenging word to us all. But he came to bring peace, and he is our peace. Pray about this word. God bless you.